We strive to live the gospel through gentleness, hospitality, and service. That particular call to service is intimately related then I, I believe to this vow of obedience which is a responsiveness to a call beyond myself that it's not just my needs that are important. I have in my room an image of uh, Francis and the wolf of Gubbio and underneath it it says whoever comes to you whether friend or foe is to be received as a brother and I think you know that's the gospel in distilled form. I felt a calling towards the church, and at the same time I felt a calling towards a life of service. Francis did not want to walk into a situation and say, well, I'm here to teach you. You know, I'm here to tell you what's right. I'm here to give you the best advice possible. Francis would walk in you know, to be with someone and say, I want to get, you know, I want to get to know you. The three vows that we take and that we invite men to experience in the process of formation of poverty, chastity, and obedience are very, very countercultural. It's not what the direction that our world is moving, and it's a way of life for them that they somehow have felt moved by God's Spirit to embrace. We seek to address the changing needs of the church and the world. I see the connection between those early Italian immigrants with our friars working with the Latino populations that are here in the Eastern Panhandle. It's the same stories. It's not Italian anymore, it's Spanish. If I don't enter into this relationship with God, and if I don't come to know Jesus Christ more fully in my life, how can I possibly authentically bring it to others? How do I grapple with the, the reality of, of a young woman who comes to me and her husband has cancer and, and has little children? I hope that I, I love people as, as a brother. I hope I see them as a brother and sister. And, and so it's not a relationship of, of power. It's a relationship of being one in the family of God. I mean, that's the bottom line. God is our Father and we're brothers and sisters. It doesn't get more complicated than that. By calling ourselves and others to prayer and conversion. To prayer and conversion. If we begin with Jesus when he's laying down the conditions for discipleship, he says, if you wish to follow me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Conversion, at least as I understand it, is not a one-shot deal, you know, but I converted to the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm good to go. My experience is that I have to turn every day toward the, God's reign, God's sovereign will, and turn away from, uh, from my own self-desires. The whole experience of Francis embracing the leper at that key moment of conversion in his life always said to me that, well, Francis recognized the leprosy. He recognized the vulnerability and the poverty within himself. Stay with us now, for it is evening. My experience is that the more I come to know who I am and who I am before God, and as Francis says, that I am and nothing else, that the more I know that, the more I realize that I'm a broken, hurt human being, sinful, and that's why I am called into this life of conversion and penance. It's the willingness to be able to die to my own agenda and not to be a slave to my own agenda, which can happen so frequently. We've discovered that in the early days of Francis, that he was really called initially into become a penitent in the city of Assisi. He was reaching out to lepers, the marginated people of the time. And he said, and God led me into their company and what was bitter for me became sweet. So uh, there's a whole kind of movement in the journey of his life. In Francis, it happens over a period of years. First he has the idea of going into battle for his city. And then he comes to realize that that's not what it's about at all. And so he joins a group of penitents. These penitents gathered around Francis and this rule of life that called them to service what we would call the corporal works of mercy. These early men and women continued this tradition of serving those in need. And that's our tradition that we've inherited. Through him, with him, in him. 
The celebration of the Eucharist daily is really at the heart of our lives. Franciscans celebrate Misa et Mensa, at Mass and at the table. So, in fact, every meal is an extension of the Eucharist. We're very good cooks, we're very good eaters. The food is a gift, and the community is a gift. And it's, it's always a celebration for us. The cooking and the serving, I think, as a gesture of service in community to the brothers, you know, that this is a gift I'm offering. Some of our men are called to the ordained ministry. Lord, let this offering to the glory of your name. And they function as a priest for the church, sacramental ministry primarily. And then there are brothers who are called to um, all kinds of ministries. We have people who have been in nursing, we have people in uh, various hospital ministries, chaplaincies, teaching. And so depending again on one's gifts and one's calls, but at the end of the day, we're all brother. We are looking for men who have a love for the gospel, who have a love for Jesus Christ, who have encountered Christ in some very personal way. It took me about two years uh, of prayer and, and actually taking the time to, to learn the friars, to visit with them, before I, I knew in my heart that that's the step that I needed to take. We are looking for, for young men who are zealous for the gospel. I'm really excited to being a novice with the Franciscan friars of the Third Order Richter. And I hope it's a good year. I'm sure it will be. We're trying to draw men who have an awareness of God present in all things, in all circumstances, and above all else, in all people. Being a Franciscan has allowed me to be most me. I was watching these older men come up to these younger men, and it was like a transfer of power. It wasn't just welcome to the fraternity, but the recognition that I gave my whole life to it. It's your turn now. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. If you think you can embody the love of a compassionate creator, the love of a Francis, we'd invite you to work alongside us. Your experiences, I think, are syllables out of which God makes words. Let's see what the syllables are and put them together and see if they make a word vocation. <laughs>